Hello and welcome to Fender Play Live. Last week the Rolling Stones began their world tour and as of yesterday, Fender Play now has 10 Rolling Stones lessons available. So we're going to dive into some of those riffs and talk about the Rolling Stones. To help me out, please welcome my guest, Andrew Martin. Hello. He Ray. plays. Ray. Thanks for being How here, man. Dude, I can't complain. Awesome. Talking about the Stones, playing guitar. It's the it's best life. Right? I can't yeah. complain. <laughs> so you play with a band called Palais Royale. Anybody yeah. else? I play in a band called Moon Honey as well. Uh-huh. Based in Los Angeles. And Great. And you've been on the road for, a whole bunch. Yeah, the last three months and leaving next week for another three months. Who are you so, going out with? Uh, Pally Royale with uh, Marilyn Manson and Rob Zombie. So How cool is that? <laughs> quite the extreme uh, <laughs> summer for me. Wow, that's, yeah. that's going to be amazing. Yeah. Man, that's going to be super exciting. So how long have you been playing the guitar? I've been going since I was 12. Mm -hmm. um, I uh, grew up in uh, the Cayman Islands, and that's where I was started uh, the affinity for, for Jimi Hendrix and Keith Richards and all these people. So, wow. Yeah. Very cool. So we're here talking about the Stones, and you've got quite an affinity for the Stones. Yeah. I understand you've done, you've played a lot of their music. Oh, it's my explored. favorite thing. It's like a religion for me, you know. Oh. <laughs> Super the cool. Keith Richards religion. <laughs> yeah. So we're going to take a look at some of these iconic riffs, and everything we're going to teach you today is available on Fender Play. And we're going to talk about a little bit some extras, some with the open tunings and things like that today. But let's start off with one of the early riffs from their career from 1964. Five. This is a great one for brand new players. Satisfaction. Let's do it. Awesome. One. Sounds great. What a fun riff to play, and then you can riff on and kind of do your own thing yeah. on top of it. Um, we put this riff in level one of our rock path because it's the perfect three note riff for somebody who's never played something before. And you can, you can catch those three notes with one finger. Oh, it's beautiful. And you're just. And you feel like a star already. <laughs> That's yeah, it. It's amazing. Three notes in the truth. Forget about the chords. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so, and this is a great, you know, concept of a signature, like a lead line mm -hmm. with just some basic chords and playing E, Absolutely. A, and Less D is more, you know? Yeah. It's like he heard it as this little horn line and, uh, and, uh, now look at it, it's the most iconic riff in history. Totally. And yeah. I, I love the fact that, like, he's trying to sound like Otis Redding. Yeah. Right? And then they don't go with the horns because the guitar, the fuzzed out guitar yeah. sounds so cool. But then on later, I've got a live Otis Redding record where he covers it's Satisfaction yeah. with the horns. So iconic. <laughs> Super cool. So let's jam on this a little bit more. Maybe we can trade off a little bit. Yeah, that'd be cool. Let's so do let's it. do it again. Wow. <laughs> Sounds fun. great, yeah. So let's move ahead. Um, so let, by 1966, the music starts changing a little bit. They get a little psychedelic influence. Ooh. Let's check out. Ooh, I know, right? <laughs> let's check out Planet It Black. Why don't you play that riff, and I'll and I'll hit the chords. <laughs> Thank you. 
cool riff. I mean, music is changing. They're getting these uh, Eastern, inf uh, Eastern, you know, music feel influences. Yeah. Brian Jones plays that riff not on the guitar but on a sitar. Sitar, yeah. Right. He just figured out, okay, I can just tune this one string to that note exactly. I need and play that cool line. But it sounds cool on a guitar too, you know. Yeah, it sounds so cool. many ways to do it. Yeah, and then the you know just simple acoustic guitar driving like eighth notes and E minor. Yeah. Right. So. Like, beginning guitar, man, is like soloing. You get that E minor pentatonic. We yeah. show you that in level four of the rock path and the blues path. You can't go wrong. <laughs> Hard to bend strings on this thing. You're doing it. <laughs> I'm doing it. This guy's a legend. <laughs> My pinky's a legend. <laughs> Let's jam on this one a little bit, maybe. Uh, play through that one more time. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you've yeah, you got the intro. One, two, three, four. Okay, so lastly, we're going to take a look at another 66 classic, Under My Thumb. This was never released as a single. We've just added it to Fender Play. Let's play a little bit of this one. So, yeah. Again, I don't know if that one was played on the guitar either. No, I think it was a keyboard line, but you know, for the last 100 years, they've been playing it uh, yeah. you know, on the guitar. It sounds awesome live. Yeah, or at least 50, <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah, it's fantastic. Again, great acoustic part. Um, I love that tune, and I love it's, that riff. Yeah, it's, it's so iconic, yeah. Yeah, man, it's just like you're just kind of highlighting the chords. And again, so we actually include the guitar riff in, in play, because this is a great kind of beginner. I'm in the wrong key. Yeah. There. jam on that stuff. It's amazing. And of course they never played it the same way twice. No, it's got to be a little loose. Yeah, loosey and goosey. Oh yeah, that's it's very goosey. Yeah, it's yeah. a technical term. <laughs> we, ha we don't have a lesson on that yet in Fair yeah. Play, but we should, I know. Absolutely. So <laughs> anyway, before we move on to some later riffs, let's talk about tone and Keith Richards' tone. He played a ton of guitars, but perhaps his most iconic is the early 50s Butterscotch Tally, um, gifted to him by Eric Clapton. So let's talk a little bit about his playing and get a little bit more specific. I mean, like, yeah, what is I it think, about? I think the key to Keith Richards is not is not overplaying. Yeah. You know, um, even I came from a place where I was always overplaying and playing too much and crowding the space. But mm -hmm. Keith just has this way of just poking his head in when it's time, <laughs> and each note you know counts it. It makes you feel a certain emotional way. So yeah, um, I think the lesson that Keith gives is that. Uh, you just never have to go over the top. Just be natural, be human, mm -hmm. and show your flaws, you know? <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. But the other thing is, is, you know, a lot of people talk about, like, he is kind of a driving force of the rhythm section of the band. And one of the great things about yeah. the band are, like, as iconic as the riffs are, it's also the grooves, the rhythms that are yeah. laid down. And, and, and Charlie Watts. Yeah, Charlie Watts. Yeah. And Charlie Watts says, um, 
He says that we all followed Keith. He was the rhythm section. Oh, yeah. And just to get that from like such a fantastic drummer. Oh, it's amazing. And that's know. a part of the sound. It's sometimes it's pushing and it's pulling. Yeah. And uh, you really never know where it's going to go. Um, and that's why we love them and they're so exciting, you know? Yeah. Even talking about them like all this time yeah. later. So we got a question in, and the question is Does Keith Richards ever play in standard tuning? And I would say, you know, a lot of the riffs, you yeah. know, that we've just covered, a lot of that stuff was probably all, yeah, in standard, yeah. Standard tuning. And so we'll just say, let's stick around and find out about some of those other stick tunings around. that he experienced. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so of course, no tone talk is complete without a look at how to set up your amp to sound a little bit more like Keith Richards. So we're gonna head uh, to the studio for this week's Insider to learn more. So stick around. <laughs> Hey there, I'm Dan Ellis, instructor here at Fender Play, an international touring guitarist and bassist. We've got lots of great Rolling Stones songs on Fender Play for you to learn, but part of the fun of playing the Stones is sounding like Keith Richards. So today I'm going to show you how to get a Keith Richards tone from two different amps. I'm playing a Performer Telecaster in Open G tuning. Keith's tone is all about a slightly overdriven mid-range sound, so you don't have to do a lot to sound like him. Let's start with a small wattage tube amp. I'm playing through a 68 Princeton reverb, and I have the volume pretty low at about two, and the EQ set at noon across the board. Let's hear how that sounds. That's a pretty straight up clean tone. The beautiful thing about the Rolling Stones is the simplicity of their music. So to get a Keith Richards tone, I don't have to do much. I'm going to crank the volume to about 6 so we overdrive the tubes a bit and get a broken up sound. With the EQ, as I crank my volume, I'm going to want to start to roll off the bass a little bit so we don't lose any of the notes. We can bring up the treble a little bit, but be careful because too much of it, it starts to sound too harsh and aggressive. I'm going to keep that around 6, and then I'm going to add a touch of reverb. Let's give that a try. That's all you really need to do to sound like Keith Richards using a tube amp. Now, not everybody has a high-end tube amp available, so let's see how to get a similar tone with a more affordable Mustang GT100. Again, here's how it sounds, just as a basic clean amp. I'm going to choose the 60s British amp setting, which right away will give us some good overdriven sound. I might crank the overdrive a tiny bit to about 4 or 5, and then again adjust the EQ a bit for a more high-end chimey sound. And we'll add a little reverb here by adding it to the signal chain. Selecting there, we'll get reverb, look for the 65 spring, and then we'll accept that, and then we'll adjust the level a little bit, take a little bit level off. And we'll be sounding like Keith Richards in no time. So that's all you need to get a good Keith Richards tone out of your Mustang GT amp. No frills, just clean with overdrive and some EQ adjustments to get a biting tone. If you don't have a Mustang, experiment with your amp at home and see if you can get your own Keith Richards tone. Now for you Mustang users out there, we've uploaded our Keith Richards tone to the cloud so you can download it on your own amp. And for Fender Play users, check out our lessons for the songs you heard in this video. For more info on these amps or Fender Play, check out Fender.com. See you next time. Thanks, Dan. Welcome back. Now, if you missed the end of that video, remember you can download our exclusive Fender Play on your Mustang. Just head to tone.fender.com and search for Call Me Keith. We're actually both set to play on Call Me Keith now. I've got a Mustang. Such a great setting. Yeah, it sounds really cool. <laughs> yeah, we get real close, a nice bite, but we're still bright. Yeah. Bright and bite. That's not confusing. Bright bite. Yeah, bright. Yeah. Bright. Yeah. Right, not three times fast. Anyway, we're going to move forward to the later 60s and even into the early 70s a bit and talk about a big turning point 
and Keith's playing and kind of developing his own artistic signature, which is playing in open tunings. Yeah. Right. So we've got lessons in Fender Play for several open tunings, including ones used on some of the Stones tunes. So you can sign up for your free trial and check them out. But first up, we're going to look at Jumpin' Jack Flash. So I'm in an open E tuning, meaning my, my guitar is tuned to an E major chord. So that first chord sounds really cool. So big and open and <laughs> piano-like. That's rad. All right. Well, So yeah, these open tunings are great and like how innovative to come up with a chord where you bake in like, you know, like a power chord, normal, mute a string, and then yeah. you've got like, like this open B string that can just ring out. It's so cool. <laughs> Very cool. And it sounds really good against your power chords. Yeah, absolutely. It's such a big Panasonic sound. It's like the quintessential. Uh, panoramic, sorry. <laughs> Panasonic. Um, panoramic sound. Um, you know, uh, you really can't have the Stones song without that. Right. You know, it's it's amazing. So. Right. And the fact that like you can do it in standard and I can do it yeah. in this tuning. This is of course is a great uh, tuning for you know playing slide as well. So just yeah. really kind of idiomatic guitar oriented playing, yeah. but simple. Absolutely. It's totally. But not simple. overthought. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So it just gives him a distinctive sound. Um, and so just to, you know, like, let's show this in standard. Actually, on the Fender Play Lesson, this is one that we taught in standard because it's so commonly played that way. So yeah. And on, uh, you know, if you're in this open E, you get the open string. you tear it up a little bit. I'm going to play this riff for a little bit. Right, just just yeah. have some Let's fun, go. man. Whoa. That sounded great. Fantastic. Okay, so another open tuning that Keith used a lot, and I think they really default to that a lot of times live, is open G. So this is now time for your costume challenge. Right. Oh wait, I don't have to switch guitars. Oh wait, I, I have to switch guitars too. <laughs> so we're gonna look at a couple more tunes today. First up is Street Fight Man, as soon as I get my, my, fighting, my fighting guitar on. Right, but uh... <laughs> Why don't you go ahead and start it out? Mm. Man, just two yeah. chords. You know, and you can play so many of those Rolling Stones shapes with just that. Yeah. So All cool. day. Yeah. <laughs> so let's talk about your open G tuning and uh, something interesting about your guitar. Something happened. The, the, the top string disappeared. Wait. So this whole time Keith Richards was, was playing without this top E string, yeah. which, you know, it, it, in these songs it was just getting in the way, so we just took it right off yeah. to this day. So you can just go. 
It's fantastic. Yeah, perfect. But when you strum that chord out, you've got like open. Yeah. Let's hear the guitar, just the open strings as well. Yeah. See, look at this. I'm working too hard. <laughs> Here I gotta. Who needs to do that? I have to fret this to whole. To, you know, just sit back and do whatever you want, you know? God, I've been doing it wrong the whole time. The whole time. time. We've all been doing it wrong the whole time. Keith apparently is doing it right. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> so this, you know, they recorded it in, in one tuning, and there's several ways to do it. On the Fender Play Lesson, we'll put you in open G, and we'll actually do it with a capo on the fourth fret, because actually, I think it sounds like they're actually down a half step on it. But this open G is just the way that they, yeah. they do it live. And it works. Yeah. Let's play a little bit of that. <laughs> That's the wrong chord. That's, everything's the right chord. I love it. I love it. Okay, we got one more tune to check out with you guys. We're going to bring it home with one of our tougher lessons, which is Brown Sugar. So, yeah. super iconic tune. Let's, let's play a little bit of it. You got it. You got it in open G. I'll play it in standard. Ready? One, two. Too hard on that thing. What a great riff! And it's killed it. <laughs> yeah, I've never killed seen it. anybody so like that on a I killed it. stick. I killed it dead. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's such a great riff. And when I was when I was a kid learning, I took guitar uh, lessons, and I didn't know anything about the open G tune. Yeah. I just knew I wanted to learn that tune and that riff, and so I just had to kind of you know it was great. I learned some you know cool triad shapes yeah. I wasn't familiar with before, and just getting that. <laughs> You know those moves down, but you know in reality when those guys are playing it live, and you know you know Keith's in that open tuning, sands low E string, oh, yeah. right? And then I have the opportunity to kind of rip around in totally. standard tuning or work too hard. Yeah, I mean I could um, <laughs> I could solo on these three strings if I yeah. need to. <laughs> you, you want to do a little bit of that? No, no. <laughs> <You're> like, <laughs> that's okay. Man, what a great riff! So play a little bit of that without me kind of in your way. Just just that riff and just that 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 constant move. <laughs> Right? It's golden. It's Beautiful. golden, right? I, now here I gotta sit there, similar, and then I learned how to use my pinky on that bar shape. It gets, yeah. it gets close. Yeah, it's it good. It's close. good. Yeah, it sounds great. So let's uh, let's play on that just a little bit more. I wanna I wanna noodle a little bit. You don't cool. mind me noodling?
find those notes, man. It sounds fantastic. Okay, so again, all of these songs are available and techniques you heard are available to learn on Fender Play. So jump in, learn your favorite tune, and show us what you got in the community. So before we get to the homework, let us know your comments and what riff that you want to hear again at the end of the episode. Hopefully we've got some time. All right, so it's homework time. I right? love homework. I love giving homework. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I love giving homework too. So it's a learning program, so the homework should be fun. We're talking about the stones. So we've got all these great stones, tunes, and riffs. So if you're just a brand new beginner, just get into playing maybe for a couple of weeks, get into that rock level one and check out that three note satisfaction riff and upload a video of yourself playing it. And you'll have you know, great support from the community and comments from some of the instructors. So go for it. If you're a little more experienced, maybe play that sweet paint it black line that you were playing earlier. You want to play a little bit of that again? I'm in a different tuning, but. Oh, yeah. I'll do it. <laughs> Do what we can. Oh, boy, thank you. Thank you. Like, Here, you do it. And you're like, no, you do it. <laughs> and then if you want to blow our minds, you play that riff from Brown Sugar or any of your favorite Stones tunes. So we've played that Brown Sugar riff quite a bit. So I think we can get oh, yeah. to the giveaway. Oh, yeah. This is what a lot of folks are waiting for. So this week's winner is... Marina B. Woo! All right. Woo! Marina, congrats. Congratulations. Remember, the more videos you watch, the more chances that you have to win. So now it's time. Let's do, let's do some shout outs. So can you help me out with some of these shout outs here? Yeah. Audrey, she wrote her first song and shared it after being inspired by a Fender Play lesson. That, that one That's got amazing. me so stoked. Like yeah. one of our chord switch exercises. We've got a whole bunch of those on path. And she took it and took a creative route to it and made something out of it. So super proud of Audrey, you. Audrey, you're a legend. Yes, indeed. <laughs> what about the next one? Kelly completed homework from Fender Play, uh, played Cupid by Sam Cooke, and sang to it, and it sounded unbelievable. Congratulations, Woo! super proud of you too. Also a legend. <laughs> right on. So, okay, so Fender Play updates. This is always super exciting. So we are constantly adding to the site songs, skills. So as we've mentioned before, we've got 10 Rolling Stones tunes on play, all of which you heard today. Plus we've got Honky Tonk Woman, Ruby Tuesday, Sympathy for the Devil, mm. right? And you can't always get what you want. Plus we've got some more coming soon, including Can't You Hear Me Knocking? I know you... One of my favorite riffs. Dude, <laughs> it doesn't get better than that. So we're really excited about that one. Uh, we just filmed it recently, so that'll be around pretty soon. Yeah. Uh, we've also got a Nirvana tune uh, about a girl on the site, so we're super excited. We've got some more Nirvana coming up very soon as well. We've also got a couple of new bass lessons. So some, for brand new players, we've got Stay by Rihanna that, we've, that we're teaching on bass, and as well as an Offspring tune, Pretty Fly for a White Guy. So a whole bunch of really fun, cool tunes. So um, let's wrap it up. It looks like we've got a request for Under My Thumb. Oh. Yeah, let's just play a little taste of that. Let's yeah, yeah. <laughs> you may need to do a costume change here. I like it. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming by. It was it's a blast. Been, it's been super fun. Man, Thank great you. player. And, and thanks for sharing your knowledge of Keith yeah. and all things Stones, man. I think we have a great duo. We'll yeah. have to bring this to the arena next. Let's do it. Hey, <laughs> see you at the Enormo Dome tomorrow night. <laughs> all right, friends. Thanks so much for being Thank with you. us. Keep practicing. We'll see you next time. How about that? Do your homework. Do your homework. <laughs>